Hi again, everybody. It's a pleasure and honor to launch right into May edition Living Histories with Jen Schwartz from Syracuse. Jen, please tell us about Living Many Histories. Um, hello, um, I guess I'll title the talk, um, uh, Biophysicist versus Artist. Um, so thank you so much, Sri and Jasmine and Charlie and Tapa for organizing uh, such a series. It's a really kind of interesting um, a take and learning about physicists as people. Um, so I guess in terms of the early years, um, my dad was a postdoc, he had a PhD in, in physical chemistry at the University of Washington. My mom was a nurse. Um, and um, I was born in Seattle, Washington then. Um, and here's a picture of me at age one, a picture of my um, parents as well. Um, my dad eventually got a job at NIST, um, the National Institutes of Standards and Technology, the Gaithersburg, Maryland branch. And so we moved to Maryland, to MD. Um, and we also along the way, or I guess my parents also along the way, um, had two more uh, children. Um, so I am the eldest and I had then uh, two younger sisters, um, Emily and Carolyn. Um, so that made up our family. Um, when I was around seven or so, um, we joined something called the Mother of God community. And this is no joke. Um, here is a snapshot from um, a Wikipedia page about Mother of God community. Um, it is in some sense related to people of praise, if people know about that in terms of the uh, recent uh, Supreme Court uh, justice. Um, so in joining um, that community, the people were trying to sort of live out the Bible um, in real time. There was lots of praying, lots of singing, lots of reading the Bible. Um, on the other hand, um, I did go to public school because the Mother of God community was not, uh, school was not in place yet. And also ballet uh, became part of uh, my world. Um, so there was sort of a tension between school and ballet and and uh, Mother of God community, um, which I will discuss in a moment. But in school, um, I began to love English and history. Um, English in part due to um, Mr. Uh, Sam Sell, who was a fabulous um, English teacher. Uh, I love Faulkner. Um, I love to read. I love to write. Um, I also loved um, ballet. And so here is an image, a picture of me um, actually at the Houston Academy of Ballet where I was a student um, at one point. Um, and so um, in this community, this Mother of God community, um, women were sort of more um, meant to have kids and have families and the uh, men were sort of the heads of the family and the heads of, 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 of groups and whatnot. And so going to college as a woman, um, especially I was supposed to be single for the Lord, um, was a bit um, contentious However, my dad, being having a PhD in chemistry, you know, realized that, hey, we have to push for this, as my mom did as well. And so I did attend the University of Maryland um, in College Park. Um, so I could uh, commute to school, and I would commute to school with the, some of the other um, people, other uh, people in the community, the Mother of God community, and we would go to the chapel, and we would pray when we got to school, and we would you know, then go to our classes, and we'd come back and pray, and then we'd go home. Um, I still loved English and history at University of Maryland, so I decided on a um, major um, in history. But after three semesters, um, I dropped out and decided to become, or I was accepted as a professional student at the Houston um, Ballet Academy um, out in Houston, Texas, because I still had this longing for ballet. Um, and I was there about six months. I auditioned for the Washington Ballet back near my hometown in, in Gaithersburg, Maryland, though, located in Washington, D.C. Um, I became an apprentice, so that was my first sort of job, if you will. Um, that job um, lasted for about six months or so, um, and then I ended up, um, for various reasons, and then I ended up going back to college, um, and at that time also left the Mother of God community um, along with the um, rest of my family. Um, and it turned out, um, as the Washington Post magazine uh, labeled it, sort of a suburban type uh, cult. So. Um, in the end, I learned lots of things, um, but um, sort of took a different path. So you haven't heard the word physics yet. Um, now in walks physics. So while I was at um, University of Maryland, um, you know, I began and other people would say, oh, a history major and a dancer, a former dancer can't do physics. Um, but I started taking physics. I took physics uh, one for majors with Christopher Lobb 
and I loved it. Um, I took more physics classes. I took more history classes. I had a honor seat. I wrote an honor thesis in the history about the humor because I had had a class in humor theory about the Lincoln Douglas debates. Um, and here's a picture of Professor um, Love. Again, thanks, um, thanks, Chris, for really um, showing me the, the interesting world of physics. Um, and meanwhile, I also did some summer research with Professor Osnott Herzberg in X-ray crystallography at um, at um, CAR, the Center for Advanced Research in Biotechnology, again, near where I live. So um, I could sort of uh, live, live at home and do these things. Um, eventually, I was sort of toggling between, oh, I really love history, but I also am getting to love physics more and more. And eventually I did a summer research project with Professor um, Tom Cohen, who is a nuclear physicist at the University of Maryland. And we work on a project, a quantum mechanics project for color transparency. Um, and I realized there was a lot of creativity in doing physics while doing research. It was a little bit different than coursework that you could um, sort of, in terms of being creative, in terms of what types of questions you ask even and this and that. So I really became more and more fascinated. Here's a picture of, of Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. So um, after University of Maryland, um, I got accepted into grad school at Harvard. I just want to thank uh, Professor um, Howard um, Georgi um, for that. Of course, a number of times over we were told as women, oh, you're here because Professor Georgi you know, wants more women here. So great. Um, I wanted to do condensed matter theory. I really had my heart set on uh, modeling persistent currents and mesoscopic rings, given my um, connection with Pritchard Mahanti. Um, in the end, that didn't happen. but. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Daniel Fisher took me on as a student. We worked on understanding the nature of the pinning transitions. Um, and I learned a lot in the sense of I learned a lot in terms of how to stand your ground um, at Harvard. And it was really um, sort of a very much a, a learning uh, a boot camp experience, which I take with me wherever I go. So thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, at Harvard, I also met Professor Christina Marchetti, who was doing a sabbatical there. Um, a ray of light, if you will, while I was at Harvard. I also met Ron Maiman, who was um, a graduate student at Cornell at the time, and we talked um, a, a lot of physics. Um, so thank you, Ron. Um, went to a postdoc at Syracuse University, um, where I started again, while well, continuing work on depinning transitions and satisfiability um, with professors, Christina Marchetti, um, who now I sort of consider to be my fairy godmother and uh, my physics fairy godmother and, and Alan Middleton, um, again, working on depending transitions and whatnot. Um, during my first postdoc at Syracuse University, I also met my future partner in crime, orchardist and farmer, Stephen T. Cummings, um, who is the owner of Indian Creek uh, Farm in Ithaca, New York. Um, there's a picture of Stephen. Um, went to do another postdoc at UCLA at UPenn, worked on jamming transitions, um, with Andrea Liu, um, and there I began to think about um, biophysics. Um, and here is a first uh, a snapshot of a first paper um, in biophysics with Ajay Gopinathan, Kun Chin Lee, and of course, um, Andrea Liu. Um, so I really have um, Andrea to thank, um, one, for introducing me to biophysics, and I guess I should also say, um, well, uh, Christina as well, um, for her support. Um, over the years. And um, I'll tell you this story very briefly in the sense of, well, I eventually went back to Syracuse, became a faculty member. And the story is, is there was a, a job search for a faculty member at SU. I did not apply, um, even though I was applying for jobs at the time. And I got a call from Christina, um, who knew I was dating Stephen, the orchardist slash farmer at the time, saying, oh, Jen, you haven't applied. You know, there's an opening. I said, yes, I know. But and she said, are you still dating that farmer in Ithaca? I said, yes. She said, apply. And she hung up the phone, <laughs> I applied, um, and, and thankfully um, got the job. So at Syracuse, I've become more increasingly sucked in to the world of, of biophysics. Um, and here's sort of an image of thinking about the shape of cerebella in mice and modeling the shape um, with uh, Tyler Engstrom, uh, Ten Zhang, Andrew Lawton, Alex Joyner. Um, here is an image of a model cell nucleus um, uh, by Sarti Gupta in collaboration with, and um, Drew Stevens and Ali Patterson and Ed Bannigan. Um, so working on lots of things from a computational or theoretical point of view. Um, and here, just to conclude, is actually a slide 
that I show in my research talks, I actually showed this at um, um, March meeting this uh, past March in terms of a trajectory, um, in terms of how I sort of think about my work nowadays. Um, so just for fun, they're actually, yeah, you can show a trajectory a slide maybe um, on topics, even in your research. Um, and in terms of takeaway uh, life lessons, um, I'd like to say, be resilient. I've usually sort of considered myself as a turtle. Now I consider myself as a cockroach. Be resilient, you cannot destroy me. <laughs> um, build your legacy, um, build your legacy. Students, I have students um, that I love, students that come back to me and say, hey, Jen, can we collaborate? We continue our collaborations years after the fact. Um, building your legacy is not just for, about writing papers, that of course is at least the, the main focus, but it's also about the people that you train. Find your voice. Um, it's been difficult to, for me to find my voice over the years. I'm struggling, but I'm still trying to find my voice. So maybe that's more a shout out to me. Identify your allies. We could talk more about that later. And be creative, be creative, be creative. All right. And I'd just like to follow up, uh, wrapping up with the um, ballet discussion. So if anyone knows a little bit about ballet, uh, Misty Copeland um, is the first black principal dancer in American ballet theater. Um, and as this is actually recent as a few years ago. And um, she said, know that you can start late, look different, be uncertain and still succeed. Now, what, the six, what does success mean? That might mean different things to different people. For me, success is I am being paid to do physics, which I love. So, um, and that, with that, I'd like to thank many, many people. Um, I probably not have, I have not listed um, everyone um, that I probably should, um, but um, here is a list that will be a running list and that of course you can shout out to me and say, hey, Jen, add me to your list. Um, and I will, thank you. Uh, wow, thank you so much, Jen. Um, on behalf of the audience, I'm clapping and let me get started by asking a question uh, relating to uh, people who are rays of sunshine and fairy godmothers <laughs> um, in academia. Um, you highlighted how important uh, that was for your own trajectory. Um, I want to ask, how do you pass this vibe to your mentees? and encourage them to be rays of sunshine? Yeah, so first I start by being an example in the sense of um, maybe I'm not always the best example, but always trying to be um, be a champion for them. And and if they see that I am being a champion for them, that, you know, that I in principle can then become also their fairy godmother. Um, and I, I like, to do that. Um, and also, yes, to encourage them to be uh, fairy godmothers or godfathers or god people um, as well. Um, so I, by example, I think is, is mostly how I do it. Um, but um, of course, to say it explicitly, I guess I should do that more often in my own group. Um, a second question before I wrap up quickly. Uh, you highlighted so poignantly growing up in a cult. Uh, you're in academia now. Do you see parallels? Do you see divergences? Um, there can be some par parallels. That's a very interesting question. So actually, with the Mother of God community, there was certainly a hierarchy in place and certain uh, gatekeepers, if you will, um, in terms of who are the spiritual heads or regional heads, cluster heads, and whatnot. Um, so in academia, there also tends to be or can be this sort of power structure at play um, and, and, and gatekeepers at play. Um, so that's one similarity. Um, of course, there are, there are many differences. And I think certainly um, studying physics, um, the freedom to, to think and be creative, and, and at least as from a theorist's point of view, step outside, read a paper, oh, I'm going to start modeling this right now because it's so fascinating after reading some random paper, I encourage everyone to read random papers. Um, and so the freedom of thought, of course, is 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 there um, in doing physics in academia. There is sometimes though, your thoughts may not be heard because you have a competing idea that maybe is, is prevalent of, at the time. And so it's hard to break through the ice and get your ideas sort of have your ideas heard. Um, but certainly there's a freedom of thought um, in academia that is not <laughs> present at all um, in a type of suburban cult. Uh, wow, thank you again, Jin. Um, 
for a very inspiring talk and these thought-provoking answers. In the interest of time, I'm closing the recording.